It's 5 p.m. Here we are. Recorded in progress. Here we are. It's July. Happy July already. Oh, my goodness. Um, hi, this is Watch Me Work, where we sit. Uh, we meet every every week, pretty much, on Mondays, and we work we we work together we talk about your work with you because why because we love you and uh because i i just really enjoy uh encouraging people to do their thing so uh we've been doing this for oh almost 15 years we started in a theater down the street from the public theater and then we moved into the public theater and then when covid came we moved on to zoom where we are lovingly supported by the new work development department and how round um, yeah, we love y'all. Um, while we, so we want to work together for 20 minutes and then we're going to talk with you about your work and your creative process. While we do not have the time, the bandwidth to actually have anyone read or present their work, we do have plenty of time to talk about it. And this is a loving space, which means, which means, which means, uh, that if you have to say some shit, you know, keep it to yourself. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. And if you if you think you're going to have to say some shit and start saying shit, I might just, you know, uh, call on somebody else to share. OK, uh, if you need to, if you want to get in touch and ask a question, new work development, tell us how to do it. Ooh. <laughs> OK, so at the end of the 20 minute session, you can use the raise your hand function and then we'll ask you to unmute and then we'll just answer questions in order of the answers. It's that, it's so easy. Okay. Anything else anybody wanna add? New work development? Yay. You know, we just wanted to say hello, happy July, and also share that this is Haley's last Watch Me Work as the New Work Development Fellow. Her last day is July 3rd. She does plan to continue to join our community, but we just wanted to give her some love for being on the six-month journey with us. Thank you. So great to have you. So great to have you. Yay. Yay. All right. Well, here we go.
but like All right, all right. Okay, that was 20 minutes of work time. Hope hope it went well for you. Um, and now we've got the rest of the hour to talk with you about your work and your creative process. Anybody has any questions? We can also sit in silence. And as a reminder to what Haley shared, you can Click the raise your hand button and we'll start a queue and then we will ask you to unmute. Hi, Lisa, you can unmute yourself now. Hello. Hey, Lisa, how are you doing? Hope you're doing okay. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Good. Hi, everybody. Um, so I've got a, um, I was going to say a procedural question, but I, I'm, I'm not sure that's the right word. I'm going to say it anyway. Like All law right. and order? Okay. Yeah, exactly. Like law and order. Yeah. Um, so I, I, maybe I'm alone in this or not alone in this, but writing new stuff is a lot more fun than revising. Um, but I have this big pile of stuff that needs to be revised and some of it's actually on a deadline. Um, and then some new thing, yeah, I know. And then some new thing pops up and I go, oh, that's really cool. I wanna write that. I, I'll just write for a few minutes. And then, yeah, the day goes by. So is there some process, uh, procedure, um, about organizing work between generating new work and revising the old. And I know one of the most helpful things that you said to me was, or you said to all of us actually was, you have to give out as much as you take in, meaning you have to write as much as you read um, or mm -hmm. watch or see other people's work. So is there some really helpful bromide that's like that for generating and revising? Oh, wow. That's a great, great question, Lisa. F but first, I wanna, I'm just curious, like how can we find out who, like how many in this group today, you can change your mind tomorrow, prefer writing to rewriting and how many prefer rewriting to writing? Maybe we should answer in the chat, like, and maybe someone can count the, you know, that could be fun. Like, or, or maybe, oh no, you know, we can just raise our hands. How about everybody who prefers writing uh, to rewriting? Raise your hand. No? Okay. Can somebody count? One, one, uh -oh, was that you, Rebecca? One, two, three, four, uh oh, four, Charlie's, um, four, hold on, one, two, three, four, uh oh, the screen keeps moving. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, let's just say seven or eight. Okay. And, and who loves, uh, who loves rewriting more? Uh, it, it's kind of split down the middle, kind of, sort of, right? I mean, the screens keep jumping around. This is so hard to do. Or maybe a few more love rewriting more. That's a really cool. That's very interesting. Um, and I don't know why that is, <laughs> but it's really cool. I'm always curious. Um, and Lisa, what's great. So you love that blank page, right? And then when it comes to rewriting, you'd rather be at the dentist, perhaps. Maybe that's an oversimplification, but getting your teeth cleaned or something. Yeah. I think so, it's an oversimplification, um, but yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you'd rather be doing, you'd rather be writing than rewriting. Let's put it that way, maybe, right? Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh. What? Well, it, it's it's even it's even it's so simple, Lisa. You have a deadline, you know, and. You know, do, do the work that you need to do. That's really what it's uh, what it's about. And and uh, why is rewriting difficult? That's what I'm interested in. Uh, I don't know. I'm actually revising a piece that I wrote what, uh, in the first 20 minutes here. And it's like, I guess I, in all honesty, once I get into it, I'll go, oh, this isn't so bad. Oh, I remember these people. Okay, now we're talking me and the characters, um, mm -hmm. but I guess just thinking about it. I don't know, I, I, for me, the generative stuff is just a little bit more fun and a little mm -hmm. less work. Right, 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 right. That's, and that's okay, that, that's okay. Like I said, you're, you're, you're not alone in that. And um, I, I think there's no, the, the, the simple equation is, I think probably so simple that it, it might be annoyingly simple in that, you know, um, what's great is that you're brave enough to go out there into the unknown and write, and you have to lend yourself some of that bravery when you go into the known and, or the little less unknown and, and rewrite. You know, you can, uh, it, you said once you get into it, it's not so bad. You can use your timer and say, I'm only going to rewrite for five minutes, you know? I'm just going to rewrite this first paragraph. That's all I'm going to do. And then uh, maybe how long is the piece that you have to rewrite? Is it really long? A hundred. Uh, it's the seven thousand words that I'm working That's on it. for a workshop. So how many um, how many pages is that? Uh, a bunch. Let's see. Uh, twenty three pages. Great, great, great. So you can, I mean, so when's your deadline? Uh, I have to turn it in by the 15th. Of July. Okay. Okay. So let's just say it's 30 pages long, right? Sure. Okay. So you, right. So, so, and you live uh, on the West Coast, on the East Coast, on the North West Coast. Coast. That's what I thought. Great. So you've got more time than we do on the East Coast. That's what I thought. You live on the West Coast. Okay. So you've got so you've got like two 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 pages a day. You have to rewrite. Yeah. Yeah. Two yeah. pages a day is, is is you can break it up into half a page segments of time and say I'm going to sit down for 30 minutes and I'm going to rewrite half a page. And then towards the other, in another part of the day, I'm going to sit down for 30 minutes and I'm going to rewrite another half a page and work through it methodically. Okay. Um, it, it's, it's just that simple. You just, just keep breaking off bite-sized pieces, march your way through it. And as you said, once you get into it, it's a lot easier and a lot more pleasurable, you know? But just keep it really simple. 15 minutes, 30 minutes at a time. You can rewrite a half a page you get two pages rewritten a day, you'll make your deadline. Right? Okay. Okay. Sounds okay. like and a just, good plan. Just, yeah, just walk your way through it and, and come check in. And we're right here doing versions of the same thing. Believe me. Okay. Great question, though, Lisa. Really beautiful question. Thanks. Who's next? Thank you, Lisa. Hi, Crystal. You can unmute yourself. Hey, Crystal. Hi. Hi, um, hi. Um, um, so How are you? I'm doing okay. I, I got COVID, so I'm really glad we're Zooming this. <laughs> Gee whiz. Jeez Louise. You feeling, feeling all right, though? You, you see me, so you got you still have your smile. Yes, yeah, thank you. Um, I have a, like a general question, okay? So, uh -huh. This is this is based on like the experience I had. I I found out I had COVID today, but yesterday I saw Hell's Kitchen oh. with my daughter, and it like uh, it 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 impacted me in such a way, probably because 
I just remember being 17. It, it, and it, I related to it in so many ways from the mother thing to the father thing, to the mentor thing, to the clothes, to, I mean, all of it, right? And I was just like, by the end of the play, I, 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 the musical, I found that I couldn't like stop like crying. I was just so moved. I was just like, it, it just felt so much like bigger than me. Like, just like, I just was so moved and related and it, it touched on so many things that I felt like maybe I wasn't like, t like just hadn't tapped into maybe as a writer, maybe just as a mom or just as a 17 year old or, or, or whatever. And, um, you know, and I, and, and the question I kind of kept, kept coming back to is that like, you know, um, how, how do we, how do we do that as writers? Like how, um, how do we, I mean, I know we have the technique and the structure and the, uh, you know, the character work and the, um, um, the plot work and, but how does it, how do, we, how do we get the in-betweens to, to the emotional impact? Um, how do we, how, how do we tap into that? Well, that's where the audience comes in, Crystal. I mean, you um, were there, you know, you were there, you were being tapped into that's that you brought you brought the missing part to that. How do you tap into that? You you have people who are who are there who identify and relate to the story in such a beautiful way, you know? That's, I mean, don't discount the fact that you were there and you mm -hmm. had an experience, you know what I mean? I mean, and of all the musicals on Broadway, different people are gonna have ex different experiences to the different musicals, you know? Mm. Um, Oh, so there's that there's I mean, we 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 have to always be grateful for the presence of our audiences, you know, um, but it is I mean, it sounds silly, but it is just a, a bunch of uh, technical stuff being put together really well. Mm. That's, that, I mean, that sounds like it's all it is, but that's all it is. You know, a bunch of people, a whole bunch of people working really hard at their highest levels, putting together all those elements that you saw the story the music the choreography yeah the the lighting the direction the acting the singing the notes they hit the moves they made the story they told yeah hmm. that's just the power of, of of it you know i see okay I, I, I'm sorry. I mean it's just it, it, i mean or or you would say you know that's just how we roll that's what we do that's you know, all we do. And the missing pieces you and the missing pieces the audience. Yes. I see. Yeah. I'm glad you had a wonderful time though. Yeah, a lot of people working really hard on that beautiful show. Yeah, it was truly something like a a, a magical moment. So I wanted to share that. Thank you. Oh, I'm glad you went though. Thanks. Great. Did it inspire you to, to do your oh. own work? Oh yeah, absolutely. But it, it inspired me to take it to the next level. Good. There you go. Like, well, you're good. Mm -hmm. Just uh but but it, mm -hmm. of course I was like, well, what's that missing link? You know, like what am what am I missing? You know. Just uh, yeah, I, I, I don't I I do not I don't know. I don't know that's a not sure I know how to answer that. I wouldn't say you're missing anything. Mm. <laughs> I don't think you're missing anything. I just think you keep working and keep putting your work out there. Okay. Yeah. Then I'll do that. Yay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'll also offer, uh, not to say this has to be true for everyone's work, but you know, that musical took 11 years. Sometimes it takes the time to test it, to, as SLP said, bring the elements together to really be able to find that magic. And, you know, I only got to witness the development of the last two and a half years, but knowing the journey before and the journey within that, it, it 
it took time. Sometimes it takes time to yeah. find it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's very easy to see that. Very easy to see that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That's really smart. Hi, Kaylin. I didn't mean to skip you that last time, but you can unmute yourself now. No worries. Everything happens when it should. Hello. My Hello. question is, um, can you please share a story of a time where you found a character inspiration in an interesting or like odd, unlikely place? In an odd, oh, in an odd and unlikely place. <laughs> I'm just laughing. Um, so maybe you'll go to that odd and unlikely place because maybe that's where the, all the odd and unlikely characters live. No, I don't mean a physical place like Starbucks or something. I mean, like a way where, you know, I know some characters are people that you must know or just like people you must know. But because you've written so much, every you can't know a person just like every one you've written from. So there has had to be like a dream you've had or somebody you've encountered. or I know you have to have some craziness in there. <laughs> um, I, well, I mean, gee, Caitlin, um, I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just always like, you know, paying attention to people. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times uh, my characters are, are maybe mashups of people, you could say, you know, the color of her hair, the way he walks, you know, the fact that he's an ice skater. She picks in her nose. Interesting. That's enough. You know what I mean? So a lot of them are mashups of people. Mm -hmm. um, they're not, oftentimes it's not um, ever just one person. You know, it's not, I, I don't, maybe not, I don't think I've written just one, you know, like, oh, this is going to be like my aunt Sally Mae, whatever. And I'm also just aware a lot of times of, um, like, I, I actually think weird places. Like I was in a canoe and I was telling jokes in a canoe. And by the time I got to shore, I had decided that I was going to write a play called Fucking A because I was telling dumb jokes while in a canoe. So always just kind of aware, listening to yourself and the and the stuff that you say. So if you're ever in a canoe and you say to yourself, I'm going to write a riff on the Scarlet Letter called Fucking A. Yay. And you go, hey, that's a great idea. Like that. I also do what I call entertaining all my far out ideas. So when I say something like last year, I said, I'm going to start my band up again. Now, most people say things like that and they go, yeah, okay. Like that. And I go, yeah, actually, I'm going to start my band up again. I'm going to make some phone calls. And now my band is, we're playing all over the place now. And it's only been like six months, you know? So I'm constantly like, interested in the kooky shit that I say and feel like if I put like we were talking about with Crystal if I put effort into it and energy into it 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 will be fun for myself and others you know I, I really um, rarely dismiss things that pop into my mind I usually embrace them oh that's a great idea <laughs> I'm always doing that you know, so the next time you have something like, hey, I'm going to write a, a film about, you know, Calvin Coolidge or whatever, you know, that could be fun. I don't know damn thing about Calvin Coolidge, but, you know, you know what I mean? So you, you got to yeah. entertain all our ideas much more. I think we, we are taught to censor ourselves. We are taught to dismiss the notions or, or you know. Just, oh, that's silly. I'm not a kid anymore. I'm an adult. All these excuses that we have to not do those things that actually might bring us joy. So does, is that helpful at all? Yes, thank you. You have like kooky notions of things. You don't have to tell us now. You know, you can keep them private to yourself. But do you, do you often have a kooky sparks of imaginings that, that might be fun for you to entertain? Like for activities and hobbies, absolutely. And I pursue them. But as for characters, no, not so far. Maybe I need to call them into my experience. 
Hey, that's what I'm talking about. Because they'll visit you if you lay out the welcome mat. You don't have the welcome mat out there. Go to the door <laughs> of your imagination and put put out the welcome mat. Put some treats around that they might enjoy and say, come on, visit me. Like that. Will do. And as you walk around during the day and you get a spark or a hint of something. Yeah. What were you going to say? I'm sorry. What were you going to say? I just said, we'll do. I'm excited yeah, to the- see what happens. There you go. Thank well, you. The, the great question. That's a beautiful question. Thank you. Cool. Thank you, Caitlin. Hi, Cara. You can unmute yourself now. Hey, Cara. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? Well, I'm well. I'm well. Good to see you. Yeah, I'm just so excited to be here. I was really curious because I graduated college last year, and so far I've just been mostly like most of my time has been spent working retail, trying to do projects here and there. But I am mm-hmm. really curious, is there any plays or really anything you recommend to continue that education into playwriting, even though like I'm not in school anymore, but just to keep that curiosity for learning more about the craft? I mean, this is great for doing that, but do you have any like other recommendations or anything? Sure, sure, sure. Um. I, yeah. Uh, So congratulations on your graduation. Well well done. Good job. Good job. And now, you know, the, the big lessons are in session. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's what I felt anyway when I graduated college. I was like, yeah, now I'm going to learn the the rest of the real shit. (laughs) Um, So what's great is that, yeah, I mean, how, that's really great that you're a self-starter and you're thinking, how can I continue to grow as a writer? and a lover of literature. You know, the library, where do you live? Do you live, where do you live? I live uh, in California. I live in Orange County. Okay, so there are libraries there, right? They're free public libraries in Orange County. And I say this because, you know, some people don't want there to be free right. libraries. You can go and you can borrow books, right? So so what's cool is that you that still exists and what you do is you just go there to the play section you know i'm thinking is it 8 8 18 i'm not sure what the what the play section is you know but you go and you look up plays and you just want you read your way through the library yeah. it's a great way to really deeply and thoroughly educate yourself um and it's while going to live theater is great and wonderful, when you live in Orange County, it might be a little difficult. You have to drive and all that kind of stuff, but you don't have to drive anywhere when you go out and borrow some plays from the library. You've got to drive to the library, but then you sit at home and you have your imagination. It's kind of a great thing. You can also probably listen to plays on tape or, or not tape, DVD or stream or whatever they do while you're driving. It's also really good. Nice. Yeah, there's not like there's a library not too far from me. So yeah, I'll definitely do that. Thank Fantastic. You. Great. You have a library card? Maybe. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Excellent. Great. So you're all set. You just go to the library and just devour. Devour. And it's fun too. Libraries are great places. Yeah, really great places. Great question. Oh, yeah. Thanks. You're welcome. Sorry, we were having trouble <laughs> unmuting. Thank you for the pin. Thank you for that question, Cara. I, I'm in the same boat, so that was a great question. <laughs> Hi, Charlie. You can unmute yourself now. Hey, Charlie. Hey, everyone. Hey, SLP. Uh, so, uh, in the last twenty or the twenty minutes of writing, I was working towards the end of a draft, and like most plays, up to up to this last scene, it's full of specific dialogue for actors, some very light stage directions where it seems important. But at this ending, there's essentially no dialogue. And presumably, you know, in my head, there are projections, there are lighting effects, Mm -hmm. there, there are things that transition into the ending. And I'm trying to find the right balance between describing what I see in my head very specifically versus 
Not saying too much other, other than what the general effect is such that future collaborators can use their visions and imaginations to do something wonderful. And just curious if you have any thoughts about how specific to be, how to offer guidance without being too specific. That I'm, I, It's so easy with dialogue because they're going to say those words and maybe they'll mumble them or maybe they'll talk over each other. But this feels different for me and I'm, I haven't approached something like this before. Wow, that's a beautiful, the questions are so good today, you, you people. Thank you so much. That's a beautiful question, Charlie. So, um, I, I mean, I would suggest, I mean, you're going to be present uh, uh, with your collaborators when your play is is produced. Is that correct? Hopefully. Okay. Should it be produced? Okay. Yeah, well, should it be produced? It will be produced somewhere wonderful, and you'll you'll Good. just be so happy to be there. And Fantastic. I be there. Yeah. Why not? Why not? Yeah, and you're going to be there. You're going to be involved. And so I would say write down everything you see, hear, feel, and think. Go for it. And is this the first draft? A uh, second. Okay. I would say put it all out there. And then if you do a rewrite, Take a look, get it all down. Don't, I, I would just encourage you not to censor yourself. You don't, do you know who your collaborators are yet? No do you idea. know who you do? Uh, well, I have a co-writer on this, but I'm, oh, okay. I'm sort of been tasked with trying to rewrite this ending. I would write everything you see, hear, think, and feel. And then when your collaborators come on board and you have, say, three pages of description about what the, you know what happens at the end great great you can tell them up front the last you know description there was just starting points for collaboration but i just wrote down everything i thought because if there's especially if there's no dialogue and you want to and it's your play you have the right and the privilege to write down what you're seeing and feeling. You don't have to, if you need it exactly that way when you go into production, well, then that's a bridge you're going to have mm -hmm. to deal with, you know, yeah. to get there. But if it's just a starting point for conversation, I don't see anything wrong with saying what you see. That's. You didn't see anything me, wrong with, know, uh, throwing in a note at the beginning of it that this is one vision, you know, that, yeah. you know, it's going to have this flow, but the specifics might, you might have a better idea. Yeah, there you go. You might have a better idea. It's just a jumping off point for a conversation about what was, might happen with the set or costumes or whatever, projections yeah. or whatever. Yeah, sure. And and uh, really, I mean, it could be a, a litmus test. If your future collaborators are really like offended and like, oh my God, I can't do it, then I don't think they're your collaborators. You know, if, they, if you know someone takes offense or feels like really problem, if, if it becomes a problem that you've taken the lead and offered, made an offer in the face of nothing, <laughs> right? Yeah. Then, you know, maybe they're to work with you. You want to have people who are going to, who are going to meet you and have a discussion with you. Oh yeah. You know, want that discussion very much. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Yeah. So just, yeah, but lots of, you don't can, self censor. I like, the, or at least don't start yeah. with self censoring. That's good. No. Yeah. Don't, don't start with, with, with self censoring. I, yeah. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. You know, be free. Yeah. We certainly have worked for it. Haven't we? Freedom. Great. Thank you, SLC. You're welcome, Charlie. Great question. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. We do have a little bit of time. If anyone else has a top of July question, nine whole minutes. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> so many questions could be asked. So many answers could be heard. Oh, my goodness. The opportunity. Oh, endless. Oh, endless. Endless. I feel like we've become the watch me work groupies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys are so y'all are so great.
<laughs> it's also we could just like sit here and like look at each other's photographs. Hi. Yes. Yay. Rebecca, you can unmute yourself. Hey, Rebecca. Hey, SLP. How are you? I'm well, thank you. That's good. How are um, you, sister? I'm I'm good. Um I'm sort of <laughs> struck with the the first question you asked about starting something new or rewriting. Um mm -hmm. and uh and what Crystal was sharing, I had the pleasure of seeing uh Jawale's new piece about her parents. Um we did this weekend and, and met a fellow SLP -er, um oh, yeah. there too. Um oh, no, cool. and it it reminded me that um that I I've left a character out. I mean I'm writing nonfiction, but I, I've left a character out of the the ending. I I've written to the end and and it reminded me that I'd left a main character out of the most of the ending and how to how to think about that wow um, and you know my father virgil is the um the beginning beginning and the ending ending um but there's something about the arc of his life that mm -hmm. i i've missed in mm. the story the larger story, which is primarily not focused on him. Um, and and I was working on that as we were we were sitting here because I spent I spent you know most of the weekend now thinking about that and um and the and the other thing it brought up and I'm not quite sure where to go with this is how the daughter character um, keeps repeating doing things unconsciously that the father character does. And I don't know if that fits in this, um, in this manuscript, but it, it was interesting uh, hmm. to me. And, and just the way, the, you know, the thing I got from the complex lives of uh, of Al and Dot Zolar mm -hmm. is this this thing about like how what you were talking about how characters emerge mm -hmm. how people how beings who are going to be a part of the story kind of emerge in in interesting ways and in unexpected mm -hmm. ways uh, and by the way th it's going to be in New York at the Perlman Center in February, so at Bar at Bard, no, in New York City. Oh, oh I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I misheard you. Yeah, it was at Bard. It ended Sunday at Bard, but oh. in February it will be in town, great in New York City. So great, so looking easy, forward to it. Not easier to get to, um, but um, so. And I'm committed to rewriting. I'm I'm not so you know, I'm at the walk and read phase. So I'm I have some notes that I can think about putting in later. Because I uh -huh. would walk and read forever if I'm allowed to, and I'm not going to. Um uh, but that how does how the ending happens now is is on my mind and um in terms of how much of Virgil's, there's an afterlife to a bunch of characters and how what his afterlife will look like, I guess. Um, he, I love listening to you talk about your process. Yeah, well. It's it, cool to listen to. I you know I think one of the things I I realized this weekend this past weekend was I haven't 
I haven't been letting myself do uh, appreciate other artists' work. That is, I like, get out of get out of the house and away from the computer, and mm -hmm. whether it's art or plays or what have you, and mm -hmm. and how important that feels. Um, and I don't always get this as focused an idea mm -hmm. as as this one feels to be. Um, mm -hmm. So. So I just wanted to report in that I am now doing walk and read and I have documented the ideas and, and set them aside and, and marked them in, in the journal so I know where they are. And um, and hopefully, you know, by, by the next time we meet, which I think is next Monday, the walk and read will be done and, um, and the rewriting will commence. Um, Exciting. Yeah. So you're wondering about Virgil's afterlife. Did you say that? Yes. So I start with Virgil being dead and I end with Virgil dying. And in between is a whole, our several lives of related to the, the larger story. But there's an afterlife, there's a before the events, and then there's the afterlife where everything changes. And I have not included how his life changed. Um, and that all of a sudden felt like it was missing. And I remembered early on in my process, I wrote, I wrote about it some. Um, you know, he went from being a kind of bold, handsome young man to, as near as I can tell, being afraid. And he had, there was reasons to be afraid. Mm -hmm. But how that metastasized across time, um, along with the afterlives of the other cousins and aunts and uncles is is kind of where I'm, I, it's kind of occupying my attention, right? It's great you have a character named Virgil and you're, you're wondering about the afterlife with a character named Virgil. I mean, that's very poetic. I, I've i written a whole, I've been working on a piece about from Purgatorio where Virgil meets everybody at the, at the um, mm -hmm. uh, plane of Purgatory. Mm -hmm. gets off the boat mm -hmm. and um and it may or may not but it's like how I think about this Virgil character is mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is that and the first eclogue which is about losing your farm mm -hmm. to, to the conditions of the state and to mm -hmm. the state so those things have always informed kind of the, they're the underpinning for a lot of it. Um, but I, I've not written the eclogue where he's sitting under the shade tree, the shade of an olive tree, mourning the loss of his fields mm. and what that means. Mm. Sounds beautiful. Yeah. All right, everybody, it is six o'clock, which means we're all gonna turn into pumpkins, delicious, beautiful pumpkins. <laughs> we are back next week everyone so we look forward to seeing you next week on monday july 8th have a happy fourth for those who are celebrating okay bye-bye